I'm not proposing that we're we're spending thirty thousand dollars on this. I, I, it really a really truly a, a piloting to see if it makes a difference. And and um, you know the the officers who were uh, at the meeting um, uh, at the last uh, long-term parking committee meeting were were very supportive and thought that there was some additional increments that w could be obtained. Um, and, and by having a, a part-time officer. So I'm just saying let's test the waters and see. And, and whether you want to go month by month, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I think we have uh, to do an entry control environment yeah. and measure it as it goes along. Yeah, and that's, that's, my, that's my proposal, so. The program, the successful, may become a victim of its own successes. Greater enforcement leads to greater compliance, which leads to lower ticket revenues. Uh, that it, it's yeah. A, it, it could be a dual-edged sword. You add that to the observations that were made by the by the business members at our meeting last week, who com basically complained they were writing tickets, and people are complaining that the, I'm sorry. <coughs> but there was a comment passed by several of the merchants that, that they're concerned because we are writing tickets. So do we want to all of a sudden increase our volume to cover, increase our volume of, 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 of tickets and fines, and then drive business away from from State Street? So it, it's a damned if you do and damned if you don't. But uh, again. <clears throat> the lease that we're going to be assuming was a lease that First National Bank of Newtown had who required their employees to park there. You know, what are we doing with our merchants to say, if we get these 76 spots and the, the, the dollar lease is, is immaterial to, to, to what we're doing, what guarantees do we have this, that there will be 76 people who have permits who are going to park there? We, we don't know. So the grand experiment is going to be the grand experiment, but I don't know that we're s we have a long-term solution. We have a short-term solution. Yeah, and and fine observations, Bob. And and I I, I think part of the, the the question you raised about having the businesses park behind Ten Center is on the agenda for a meeting tomorrow night and how we're going to do that. Um, but also, I, I just think it's it's we need to test the waters. We need to have some action here in a controlled way. Um, um, and that's why uh, I think it's prudent to 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 take this step at the same time, hopefully, that we're going to be having a lease behind Ten Center um, before we enacted a, a, an ordinance that was more restrictive in the, in the borough. Um, but, you know, not to say that at some point we may not need that. But, um, uh, you know, long term, it comes down to supply and where we're going to get supply for parking. Um, and, and also, I know it was raised at our, at our work session, um, greater um, uh, enforcement of any um, particular zoning uh, um, agreements made uh, in order to get a COA for, for a business in town, um, uh, at least moving forward. So I think there's there's a lot of aspects to this one. So, so, the, I, uh, oh, so I guess one of the other things that I was thinking about, and thank you for your committee for, for doing all this work, um, if we have the the uh, 10 center lot and we can and I think the business communities come out and I know the largest employer in State Street seems pretty willing to cooperate and hopefully get his employees to park there if we do that we free up spots for residents so they don't have to walk three blocks to get to their own homes do we have the capacity in those other lots for shoppers once we've kicked them off though because I, I can see that the the employees yes they're there all day but I know I mean I, I jump in I park on center I run into the hardware store I get back in my car I take off to the township wherever I'm going do we have that capacity to satisfy the, the businesses because are they then going to come back to us and say you know, they're still driving around looking for a spot because all these side streets are residents only? That's my only concern. If, if we put all the businesses in a perfect world into Ten Center, we clear the streets off, <coughs> shoppers still can't park there, or is there enough volume or capacity to, to meet that? Yeah. We're, we're, what's on the table? Th that's not on the table tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. But Gerard, to clarify that last question John had just so I'm clear, and no one's misled here this evening. The resident only parking is not pure resident only. There is a time frame within which others can park. It'd be like State Street. Yeah. Right. So I don't want. Yeah, sorry. I, I missed that nuance. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, that, that's it. Because I've sat through a lot of these meetings, and one of the, one of the struggles has been just that. Yeah. How do you accommodate the, the need of residents to be able to park maybe in front of their home, but at least on their block, with the uh, additional capacity for shoppers who will then walk down the State Street, all of it without employees parking there all day. So there is that, that two-hour uh, window that, that appears to satisfy you may be stopping and going to State Street to for an hour. Right. right. 
or whatever, and then being able to leave. So that's not a problem. So there is, uh, there is some uh, additional capacity there with the resident uh, parking. But the, the point I wanted to address that, that Bob kind of um, uh, piqued my interest uh, with was the, the Chief's comment about um, the, th there wouldn't be any appreciable difference in, in other officers, full-time officers' time uh, with a dedicated part-time uh, enforcement officer. And, and I guess on the surface that makes sense. By the same token, this isn't uh, a town where there are meters that flags go up. And if an officer is driving by, sees a flag up, he stops, he writes a ticket. Um, it's timed. So there, you know, there's a very conscious effort, from what I understand, to be able to determine who's in violation, who isn't. Um, and that strikes me as a pure enforcement uh, duty, which a dedicated officer could do better than the regular uh, so-called beat officer who's covering the whole town and isn't necessarily stopping in the lots uh, permit lots and isn't necessarily going car to car down State Street and doing timed determinations of violators. So just logically, it strikes me a dedicated part-time officer would help mm -hmm. with that, although I think the point's well taken. It's a pilot program, but we have to try something. Uh, last point is uh, some of the retailers talked about the 15 minutes not being enforced on State Street. And I don't think that's because our our officers consciously don't do it, I think it's because they don't have time to do it. They're doing other things. So I think a dedicated part-time officer could ha have special attention given to those kinds of uh, spots because their ability to turn over quickly every, fi every 15 minutes affords a capacity to State Street, uh, which is vital. And we may even want to expand to more 15-minute spots if it works well. But again, if people know, I'm going to get a ticket if I'm there 20 minutes in all likelihood. They're going to move in, they're going to move out more quickly, turn it over, turn it over, and the person who's stopping by to pick up a pizza at Mom's or stop at Becky's or run into the jewelers to pick something up uh, has a better chance of, of being able to do so with a spot for 15 minutes. So that seems to me a pure function of a dedicated part-time officer. And if it doesn't work, we pull the plug. Well, my, my question to Tony basically was, would we be reducing the amount of overtime hours for hours for allocated to part-time officers if we in fact had a dedicated officer uh, pursuing parking violations and his response was no uh, his view is that that person uh, would be an incremental add to his budget and he would be adding whatever the costs were uh, associated with it which would be thirty thousand uh, dollars and he was thinking about the enforcement side of the court street quadrant okay as well as the enforcement side in town. So he's, his head is wrapped around uh, having to enforce more geography. Uh, uh, I don't disagree with your observations, but in, in talking with him today, it, it just strikes me as being the possibility of incremental costs for 2012, which I just want everyone to be sensitive to. And I, I agree that we, we need to try it, but I don't think it's nirvana at the moment. Well, as I understand it, that the um we have multiple levels of parking issues going on here, and, and that the ultimate solution is we have ordinances that need to be changed. We have the consideration of bringing a police officer on. We have um, still some details about the permitting programs, both for the businesses and for if we do the residential permitting parking. That all these things are sort of um, not entirely resolved yet in terms of what can come in and what, how quickly things I think I was talking a little bit with Paul, Mr. Cohen over here earlier about where are we with all these different ordinances and so on. So at this point, if you're, you're proposing that we try, that, that we authorize um, Tony to hire a part-time officer dedicated to parking enforcement under our current rules, right? Mm -hmm. So is there, he's patrolling the, the lot behind State Street businesses, he's patrolling State Street. Um, I guess that's basically all the places that we have any restricted parking because the rest of town is, is loading zones. Loading zones, right? Uh, Fifteen minute spot, mm -hmm. but still that's yep. all in that that State Street corridor. So that you're you're proposing that we authorize a trial, and I presume that that would mean that Tony would pull in one of his part timers that he currently has on the books and give him more hours. Is that? And he has someone identified. He has someone identified who want to do that. So that we can do without changing any ordinances and and so on. But in the meantime, we need to look and. 
and as we hopefully will sign a lease on the lot behind Ten Center, that opens up a possibility for the chief to sell permits for the businesses, and I think there are still some issues that we need to resolve in terms of how many he can sell um, and, uh, and, and so on. I don't think all the details have been worked out yet in terms of how that portion comes into play. Am I, am I Correct. Concerned? And then the last piece is you're st still trying to figure out at that point, I guess, do we need to be restricting parking in the residential areas just off of State Street? So if we look at in, in incrementally, we're giving the business, em the employees more places to park. We're enforcing the parking that we have to keep people moving and get people to park where they're supposed to park to open up more, have more turnover, which is the only reason that we have parking enforcement anyway, is to make sure that there's turnovers of spots. Um, and the assumption is that, at least initially, that that is those increases and citations that you're expecting to get with someone dedicated to this is going to pay for the additional part time office hours. Okay. I think we have to see how much it does see pay for the that. assumption. Yeah. The yeah. assumption. So at this point, did you want to make a motion? Do we need a motion, or can we can just direct question? the chief to do that? Um, can a single part-time officer work 32 hours in a week and still be part-time? Well, what are our what's our description of part-time? I guess I'm assuming you're right. 38, 40. Mm -hmm. 25 and 32 are part-time. Is part-time. But within the rules of being part time. Yeah. 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 Well, a question I was going to ask, I think, has been answered, is whether it was going to be a specific person, a single specific person assigned to this role, or whether a, a shift may be filled by any part time officer who's trained to do it. And I gather it, the plan is actually the former. I would say he's going to rotate people. He's going to rotate, but he had one person that he wanted to give extra hours, additional hours to. Oh, okay. If we decide to go forward to it, there may be a permanently identified officer part time. So, Paul, do we need a motion for this effect? Yeah. No, I believe at this point you're just asking uh, the chief to bring a, a candidate to council and you'll later vote to approve the hiring, no? It's someone who's already on. No, we're not hiring. Oh, so we did it. Additional hours and expense. Part -time. It's still within his budget. I think you're giving a direction to the chief, so it'll yeah. probably be appropriate to just have a motion so that it's clear what the council's decision is on it. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to um, to authorize the um, utilization of a part-time uh, police officer for parking enforcement um, up to um, um, eight hours per day and up to four days a week um, uh, with the um, uh, police committee checking in on progress uh, on a monthly basis um, to assess the effectiveness of, of the program for for 90 days. Do you want to add that as part of the monthly police report to council that somehow this information is pulled out and identified in that report? Yep. Well, you do that, Mr. Mayor. Keep that within the budget confines. <coughs> So yeah, that we can evaluate. I, you know, doing back of envelope, comp, you know, I think I think it's within the line item on on. Uh, as long as it meets the calendar, time. yeah. So that we're not we're we're fully aware of what yeah. we're doing for that right. next year. All right, thank you. Because we're right now on on, on part time <coughs> officer salary, we're we're at thirty seven percent of our budget for the whole year. So there's some room. Aye. No, there is a meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, where we will be discussing um, a number of items, including uh, including this, uh, the uh, the uh, further discussion from from the meeting last week with the, the business owners. Uh, any additional feedback that's coming in from from them. Uh, hopefully, someone will be in attendance. And we will be discussing, uh, hopefully, uh, the utilization of um, the uh, ten center lot and how we can, as quickly as possible, get that up and used by the by the businesses. Okay. 